The objective today is to explain what extended physical addressing is used for. So we're on 3.3.6 in the Intel manual, that is page 71. And as you can see here, I even have the next part done, and that is simply because of a mistake I made when recording this, the mic was turned off. So here I am for take two. And I'm wondering if I should just try to summarize the paragraphs or continue with what I was doing in terms of just reading them in their entirety. If you have an opinion one way or the other, go ahead and let me know in the comments. For now, I'll go ahead and try to keep things the same as I have been doing them with this addition of uh, my writing. My boss purchased me a new Surface, Surface Book 2, and it is one of the coolest devices I have ever used in my life. In particular, it is great for this like education environment I'm in, so if you're like me and you love annotating books, I think you would love that product. Though now I feel like I am sounding like an advertisement. I am not sponsored or supported by Microsoft, but if they'd like to go ahead and send me one, that way I can have a Surface Book that doesn't have all these administrative controls I can't get past, um, that would be great. But let's go ahead and get going with the lesson here. It says beginning with P6 family processors, the IA32 architecture, so that's really important right there to be aware of. So this IA32 architecture supports addressing of up to 64 gigabytes of physical memory. A program or task could not address locations in this address space directly. So this is where I wrote the need for linear addressing exists because what you're doing in order for your 32-bit machine to access 64 gigabytes, it needs to create this page table thing. So this whole physical, that is extended physical addressing is all about getting a 32-bit machine to kind of act like a 64-bit machine. So that's really the answer to number two. The answer to number one is in the title. What mode do you need to be in to use PAE? Well, there it says right there, protected mode. And then it says, what is PAE and what is it good for? So I just want my students to actually write out that PAE stands for extended. Oh my gosh, I am so dyslexic. Why am I? Wait, I'm not dyslexic. So physical address extension is the same concept, isn't it? All right, I'll come back to this Wikipedia article in a second, but there it is. It actually says PAE in the description. Okay, so let's get there. Instead, it addresses individual linear address spaces of up to 4 gigabytes that map to 64 gigabyte physical address space through virtual memory management mechanism. Using the mechanism, an operating system can enable a program to switch 4 gigabytes or 4 gigabyte linear address spaces within 64 gigabyte physical address space. So you see there, some of this wording is so d difficult to understand. Maybe not for someone smarter than myself, but that's why I was thinking of suggesting we go ahead and just go with some of my summaries of the paragraphs, and therefore I can change the way these lessons are working. Okay, so it goes on to say that the use of extended physical addressing requires the processor to operate in protected mode, and the operating system to provide a virtual memory management system. Okay, so to learn more, you can read 36-bit physical addressing using the PAE paging mechanism. So that's kind of an odd number right there, 36 bits. You could also read in Chapter 3, Protected Mode Memory Management in this Architecture Software Developer's Manual that we're reading. So if you'd forgive me here, these three questions actually apply to the next session. So I can go ahead and copy and paste that into there. When I originally created this video, I was going to include this and this, but I'll save address calculations in 64-bit mode for next time. For this time, though, let me go ahead and wrap up by just kind of summarizing PAE, and then we'll read from that Wikipedia page just as like a second source of information. But it looks like Intel has just been satisfied with uh, these two short paragraphs in order to introduce you to the concept of this extended physical addressing, aka uh, physical address extensions. So while in protected mode, you can enable this physical address extensions. And what that will mean is your linear addresses are no longer your physical addresses. They are just an address that will go into a page table I'll show you a picture of that in just one second. But inside this page table, that address will connect with another address, a virtual memory address that is somewhere in the hard drive. And that's why they say that you need this virtual memory manager, 
Without it, you can't use this physical address extension in an x86 processor. And in this context, I'm saying just an x86 processor, not an x86-64 like this is for the answer to number two, PAE is for 32-bit systems. And I found it interesting that a long time ago, Intel's first trick that was not this whole physical address extensions, not using the hard drive to a store to store data that would be used by the CPU. Intel's first trick was to make their 16-bit processors such as the 8086 or the 8088 processor to give these a 20-bit bus, or I should say a 20-bit memory bus, like this was a way to help improve the chip's performance and its relationship with memory. And some additional research told me that the first use of PAE was in 1995 with what Intel called their Pentium Pro, and so I have a few videos on these old chips because that's kind of an interesting thing to look at even if you're a beginner with hopes of getting like really sophisticated I think it's still kind of nice to start at the beginning let's just read through this uh, Wikipedia page and see if I could come up with a couple more questions to help you digest physical address extensions it says this is sometimes referred to as page address extension and what it is is a memory management feature for the x86 architecture PAE was first introduced by Intel in the Pentium Pro and later by AMD in the Athlon processor it defines a page table hierarchy of three levels instead of two why did they put this there well anyways it says with table entries of 64 bits each instead of 32 which allowed these CPUs to directly access a physical address space larger than four gigabytes how large were they going for? Well, it says right here they're going for 64 gigabytes of memory. This goes on to say that the page table structure used by x86-64 CPUs when operating in long mode further extends the page table hierarchy to four levels, extending the virtual address space and uses additional physical address bits at all levels of the page table. And then there's another comma and it says extending the physical address space. So a pretty confusing sentence, <laughs> extending the virtual address space and uses additional physical address bits at all levels of the page table, extending the physical address space. Okay, so it takes the limits of your RAM and extends those into your hard drive. And this is apparently not just important for running maybe a large program that needs that, but also, I think, for security because you can run like this operating system virtually so there's some information about VMs for your virtual machines you can run these programs in the hard drive and then apparently there's just more security around that so it doesn't like infect or destroy the rest of your system when you do dangerous things or risky things on a VM well let's finish up here it says it also uses the topmost bit of the 64-bit page table entry as a non-execute or NX bit indicating that code cannot be executed from the associated page. The NX feature is also available in protected mode when the CPUs are running a 32-bit operating system provided that the operating system enables PAE. So to make sure PAE is working for you, of course, you would check your system configurations. And so another resource I used was this Explain it to me like I'm five in terms of the difference between a 32 and 64 bit system. And I guess this question was inspired by the fact that the new iPhone, the iPhone 5S, has 64 bits now. So, to better understand the need for physical address extensions on 32 bit systems, I think this does the trick. You could think of the amount of bits, 32 or 64, as these like digital fingers. So with a 64-bit machine, the biggest number you can have is this, like, really huge one. So I wish the person put in commas, because there's so many commas that would go in this number. But then they go on to say some really great information here. It says that numbers like this, or the ability to make numbers like this, is related to memory in the sense that it will allow us to create this number of gigabytes. They go on to say that this is probably more space than all computers at your school combined can hold. Like, this is a huge number did some additional research here this amount of gigabytes is this amount of petabytes that is a really huge number so the use of 64-bit systems is so huge that Intel definitely covered its bases 
in terms of these processors should be usable for years and years to come. Maybe in only a Star Trek future when we have like replicators and holodecks that are in charge of working with numbers, would we need anything bigger than 64 bits? Now I think this is a good point the person makes that these numbers or this amount is uh, useful for scientists using big numbers and useful for your computer to use more RAM. So in my classes the video game students are just uh, big fans of RAM because this means less loading times for them. And to give you an example as why that is, it says since you have so many bytes you can have so much more memory being used and this means we can put more detailed graphics in memory or load more songs into memory so there is almost no gap between playing them. Now that last one he must mean uh, specifically regarding the iPhone that you can load a ton of songs there and you wouldn't have to worry about any time in delay but I think songs or music is the wrong example I like what he said about graphics and memory when playing certain games like Skyrim you may uh, try to go to another part of the map and you have this long loading screen because it's taking the data for that area of the map and it's moving that data into RAM so that's gonna take a while well let's just end with a couple more questions for you to answer what was a trick Intel used before PAE the answer is they used a larger memory bus which was again tricky and just for fun, let's say what processor was the first to use PAE, and we'll end that video on that. Thank you for watching.